I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. How is everybody doing? God bless y'all. We give God the honor, the glory, and all the praise. My title says, When God Makes That Arrangement. Hmm. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, God gave me this word this morning, and I just got to be obedient, and it's a powerful, powerful word from the Lord. This is a salvation message. So many times we hear feel-good sermons. We hear prosperity sermons, but how many times do we oftentimes hear salvation messages? When God makes that arrangement, it's people right now saying, what must I do to be saved? I'm going back to Acts 10, but so I won't take up so much time. I'm going to just kind of do a real talk with this. But if you have your Bibles, you can look at Acts 10 because I'm talking about a man by the name of Cornelius. And when God makes that arrangement, when God sets it up, preachers, children of the Lord, we must take that, that time and, and, and spread the word. When God makes that arrangement, Cornelius was a Gentile. He was a god -fearer. He He was pretty much unsaved. And Peter preached to Cornelius because God made that arrangement. And see, back then, Gentiles wasn't even supposed to be associated with Jews. We saw one time where Peter and Paul, and Paul had to check Peter because Peter was hanging with the Gentiles until the real circumcision showed up. But I'm so glad, glory to God, that God wasn't just stuck on Jews and say, I just only want the Jews to be saved. He, he sent his only begotten, unique son to die for this whole world. Peter preached to Cornelius. Peter preached to, Con to Cornelius. Preachers, I hope some of y'all are listening. I hope some of y'all are listening. Some people right now are wondering, what? How do I get saved? How do I get saved? And when you study about Gentiles, see, Gentiles was considered to be destined for eternal damnation in those days. Oh, yes. But this man, he wasn't a Jew. Cornelius was still a God-fearer. Hmm. And if you read Acts 10, Peter shows us that Cornelius wanted to be saved. How many of us right now want to be saved? Somebody, let me, let me, let me, let me get real because see, God is speaking. It's somebody right now that could be looking at this video, might feel just like Cornelius, and want to be saved. You ready for that change in your life? And let me tell you something: you don't have to wait on Sunday morning. You don't have to wait to be inside of a church building. To get saved. Sunday is not promised to us. If you are ready for that change in your life. Let me tell you something. You can do it right now. While you got time. While you still breathing. You can come to the Lord right now. And ask the Lord to come into your life. And be your personal savior. Say Lord deliver me. I don't want to live this way no more. I have tried my way. Lord I surrender. You don't need no big fancy words to go to the Lord. Just go to the Lord and just pull your heart out. Say, Lord, I want that change. I want to be made new. I want these old things to pass. Lord, I'm tired. I'm fed up of doing things my way. It's not too late, my brothers and sisters. I don't care who you are, what you're going through looking at this video. It's not too late. A lot of people keep trying to put it off and put it off and put it off. You can't keep putting off when tomorrow is not even promised. Say, Lord, just deliver me. Deliver me. I don't want to go. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to be cast in a lake of fire. See, to the ones that don't go to church, I love you. I'm not going to be like folks and, 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 and people that bash on people because they ain't inside of the church building. I'm so glad Jesus kept going wherever he needed to go to go after the sinners. 
I'm not here to beat you in your head and say you're going to hell because you're not going to church. If you're looking at this video and you don't go to church, you still can be saved. I understand why folks don't go to church. I've been there myself. It's hard as hell to stay in church right now with all the mess that's going on. But we must continue to work the works of him that sent us. That's why I say I've been there. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. I don't know why I felt that all of a sudden, but that ain't nothing but the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. The invitation is always extended. The doors of the church is always open. Don't wait until it's too late. When we look at Cornelius, Cornelius' desire was for salvation. But he, he didn't just want salvation for himself. What I liked about Cornelius, he wanted it for his family. Ain't it amazing how God loves us so much? And some people be saying a Gentile don't know the Lord. People say that sinners don't, lo don't know the Lord. You got to be careful when you say that. This man, Cornelius, had a lot of power. He was also a soldier. But what I liked about Cornelius, check this out now. This is a Gentile. He prayed consistently. And he always prayed. And he look at this. Cornelius was generous to the poor. Let's get a little bit real. Cornelius helped so many poor people that the church won't even help. And this man wasn't even, he wasn't even saved. And look at his heart. And I just messed up somebody by saying that. Let me let me move on. I try to make you mad, preachers. I know some of y'all that look at me, y'all hate when the truth come out. If you get mad, oh well, who cares? This man gave from his heart. So was he really a bad person to me? No. He was doing good for people. And he wanted to be saved. Some of us right now need to be like Cornelius. And say that I want to be saved. So Cornelius converted over, just like Paul, Saul to Paul. See, people, when you learn what's right and God knocks us down on our own little Damascus road, when you convert over, God changes you. you supposed to drop all that other mess, all that stuff you see the world doing, everything that's not pleasing to God. Now that you know better, you do better. And if we claim to be children of the Lord, then we shouldn't be looking like devils. The Bible say that Cornelius was a devout man. Oh yes. He saw a vision of an angel of God telling him to send him to Joppa. This is when God made that arrangement. In other words, I want you to go there. You need to run into Peter so Peter can preach to you. I love how God made that arrangement. See, we make a lot of arrangements all the time, every day. But we don't never make arrangements when it comes to salvation, teaching others. We always want to jump and start doing all kind of revivals and, and all these musicals and appreciation and everything. But when it comes to going after the laws, don't nobody look like they want to go outside of the church building half of the time. When God makes that arrangement, we got to jump on that. And be willing to go wherever God say go. And what I liked about Peter, he was just straight up obedient. He didn't say nothing about how long you want me to be there, Lord. You sure you want me to go, Lord? He just simply left. But we so quick to look down on Peter because he denied Jesus. We don't never look at the good that Peter done. Boy, if I could preach like Peter. Mm. Ooh, that, I'm going to leave that alone. That's my next video. If, if I can preach like Peter, God already laid to them all. That's the next video. This man, Cornelius, the Bible teaches us that he was a responsible man. He helped people. He was over people. He had about a hundred men up under him, I believe the Bible say. He prayed, but at first he wasn't a saved man. Somebody might say, well, how can an unsaved man pray? Mm. I got a better question. How can people that's born again keep turning back to what they used to be? See, this shows us, the Bible say he wasn't saved at first. So this shows us, it don't matter how good you think you are. It don't matter what you do for people. It don't matter how many days you go to church. It don't matter how many times you preach. 
how many times you teach. It don't matter about you being in the choir, prophesizing, speaking in tongues, laying hands on people, running around the church, all of this stuff. It, it, it shows you that if you don't know the Lord, all that is just nothing. It's good. But you ain't putting on nothing but a show. You ain't putting on the whole armor. You just putting on a good show. Cornelius was a man of rank and authority. Hmm. God Almighty. Now let's look at this. Because all these people that know Cornelius. Now if all of these people would see Cornelius get saved, best believe a lot of them will want to get saved too. Well, let's, let's go a little bit further, my brothers and sisters. If people, these so-called Christians, if people would see these so-called Christians straighten up their life, then a lot of them will probably want to get saved too. But they don't want to get saved because they're looking at the ones who claim to be Christians, claiming to be Christ-like in the church who is causing all the hell. But JT, I don't want to get saved because if that's what saving is all about, this is the kind of God y'all serve, I don't want no part of that God. Because I'm sick of looking at these so-called Christians talking about they delivered and born again and they got all this jealousy, hatred. They let anybody in leadership position. They live any kind of way. They go into church faking and shaking the Holy Ghost. All of this stuff. I don't want no part of that God. I'd rather stay like I am. Oh, let the church say amen. This is how we represent God when we show all this mess. This man had men up under him. See, the thing about it, Cornelius is just like a lot of people right now. Or let me say he was before he converted. Cornelius was a religious man. He wasn't a spiritual man at first. Cornelius had to learn that religion ain't how you get close to God. So many people like that right now. Think it's all about religion. Think it's all about tradition. What the man, what man taught. And they so far away from God. We got people sitting inside of the church right now, been going to church for 20, 30 years, and still don't know who God is. This man feared God and he was obedient. Oh, when you get out of religion and learn the truth. See, religion is not redemption, and it sure ain't salvation. When you recognize that you need salvation, like Cornelius did, that's a beautiful thing. This man was spoken well of by people. All them who knew him. And he was a good man. But see, being a good man don't get you in heaven. Oh, but once again, when God makes that arrangement for you to spread the word, do we jump on it every chance we get? Y'all wonder why when the Lord wake me up, I say hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for another day. I'm on top of the ground and I'm not under the ground. Every day the Lord wake me up, I try to spread the word. Why? Because God have made an arrangement. Ooh, he have made a way for JT on and off camera to spread the word of God. I take advantage of that. I'm on it. Because one day I know I'm not going to wake up. And that one day I'm going to have to give an answer. For my life. I've done some bad things. I've done some good things. The old song say I won't complain. But if my good days outweigh my bad days. See this is the part of, of, of preaching don't nobody like to hear about. When we got to stand and give an account. And you're going to see that it didn't matter how many days you went to church. When God made that arrangement. Preachers. I hope y'all still with me. Are you trying to jump on it to spread that word? Are you going outside that church building and going to the lost? Are you praying? Are you talking to the dope dealers? Are you talking to the prostitutes? Are you praying for the gangsters and the thugs and the people that's lost? Or are you just worried about the inside of the building? When God makes that arrangement, whoo, jump on it. We arrange all kinds of stuff in this world. Some of y'all arrange the next begging sermon. We're arranging revivals and appreciations and musicals. And like I say, all these things. But are we arranging the way for the gospel? See, Cornelius received a strong warning 
from God. God was showing Cornelius his self-righteous life. It could not save him. Just like the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man couldn't buy his way into heaven. He started begging for his tongue to get cooled off. He wanted his brother to be saved because he realized he wasn't where Lazarus was at. He was on the other side. He couldn't make it. We got to tell the truth. Pre uh, Peter. Peter preached about the life of the Lord Jesus Christ who went about doing good. Peter spoke about the Lord's anointing his moral glory and his ministry. Peter preached about the cross, how Jesus died. And if you're not talking about the cross, what are we talking about? Cornelius needed to hear that message about the cross, how Jesus died for us. Salvation, eternal life, Cornelius needed to hear that. And my brothers and sisters, if you're watching this, you needed to hear it too. I needed to hear it. Have you believed the message of the gospel? And what I like about this, Cornelius, Cornelius accepted the Lord. Right then, I'm about to make some holiness people mad. He received the Holy Spirit. He didn't have to shout. Uh-oh. He didn't have to run. He didn't have to speak in tongues. He received it right then. He was born again. I like to say born from up above. When a person truly believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and accept the Lord, the Holy Spirit hits you. It enters you right then. You ain't got to act a fool and start running and all that stuff. If, you, if that's what you love doing, hey, knock yourself out. That's your business. I'm just here to rightly divide the word and tell the truth because a lot of people want to get saved, but they always talk about, man, do I got to speak in tongues? Do I got to run around a church? Do I suppose to shout? Do I suppose to do what they do? No, when you receive the Holy Spirit, that's it. You already got it. Everybody don't speak in tongues. Everybody don't run around a church. Everybody ain't jumping up and shouting. Everybody don't need a hype man to pump them up to get up into the service. I don't need hype men. So with that being said, when God makes that arrangement, mm, let's jump on it, people. He made that arrangement for Cornelius to meet up with Peter so Peter can preach to him the true gospel. Woo! When he made that arrangement, I just got to keep saying that. That's why I want to title this video, When God Makes That Arrangement. What are we doing? Now, what if Peter would have never went? He would have never left and met up with Cornelius. Hmm. With Cornelius, would he would have ever came into the knowledge of the gospel? Or would he been stayed stuck on what he thought? Religion. Remember Paul when he was Saul, he thought what he was doing was right. A lot of us, we think what we do is right. But when God breaks us down and we learn the truth, there has to be a change in us. God bless you. God keep you. Let us learn from yesterday. Live for the day. Hope and pray for tomorrow. When God makes that arrangement, whoo, hallelujah.